Ryota finds himself in a tough battle against the dungeon master in Nihonium. His attacks prove ineffective, including his special bullets and homing bullets. Even his fusion bullets pass through the dungeon master without causing any harm. Frustrated but determined, Ryota notices that one of his bullets manages to injure the dungeon master. Thinking on his feet, he fires more homing bullets, timing them to hit the dungeon master as she attempts to attack. Ryota explains that when the dungeon master's body part becomes corporeal during an attack, the homing bullets can target her. With this new understanding, he continues to fire homing bullets, which react to the dungeon master's attacks and strike her. Ryota eventually defeats the dungeon master, but the intense battle leaves him exhausted, and he faints. Fortunately, Emily arrives to check on him. Emily is relieved to find Ryota, and he expresses his gratitude for her presence. She uses a healing bullet to restore his health, and Ryota is back on his feet. He thanks Emily for saving him and mentions that the dungeons are dropping items again, attributing it to his efforts. Emily expresses concern about Ryota pushing himself too hard and getting injured, even if he can be healed. Ryota explains that he wasn't initially motivated by the town's well-being, he acted on instinct. Emily hopes he won't overexert himself but acknowledges that it's just his nature. Ryota appreciates her concern and looks forward to having her bean sprout soup again. He notices that the dungeon master has dropped a ring. As they leave the dungeon, Emily wants to share the news of Ryota's heroic deed with everyone. Ryota, however, prefers not to draw too much attention. The rest of their party join them, and Alice jokes about her failed attempt at befriending the dungeon master. Ryota suggests she try befriending another monster. Celeste reminds Ryota not to venture into danger alone, Eve expresses her desire for more carrots, and Ryota promises to stop by Telulu on their way home. The group decides to accompany him. The next day, Ryota finds himself in Nihonium, contemplating the power of the mysterious ring he possesses. He encounters some monsters and dispatches them skillfully, earning crystals in the process. Soon, he encounters the princess and her party. One of her companions informs Ryota that the idea of rings he shared won't work for a while, as they are focused on hunting dragons. Despite the princess's impressive level of 94, her party seems to struggle with these formidable foes. Curious about the princess's stats, Ryota checks her level and notices that all her stats and drop rates are at the lowest rank, F, despite her high level. Ryota decides to help and gives her a crystal he obtained, causing her to level up. He explains that his ring can convert experience points into crystals after reaching the maximum level. The princess levels up again, and her stats improve once more. Ryota predicts that by the time she reaches level 99, all her stats should be at rank A. The princess is grateful for this newfound power and thanks Ryota for his guidance. She reminisces about when she asked Ryota to accept her first ring and expresses her desire for him to be there for all her first experiences. Ryota, however, declines, feeling it wouldn't be right to take so much from her. He mentions he has other matters to attend to and takes his leave. Later, Ryota gathers his friends and reveals that he bought all the carrots and bean sprouts available in town to use for leveling up. He explains that his ring allows him to convert experience points into crystals, astonishing his companions. Ryota notes that Alice and Eve have already maxed out their levels, leaving only Emily and Celeste. He begins defeating strays as they spawn and instructs Emily and Celeste to take turns collecting the crystals. The girls make significant progress, leveling up rapidly. Celeste and Emily are amazed by Ryota's proficiency and consider him a top-tier adventurer. They express their admiration for him. By nightfall, both Emily and Celeste have maxed out their levels and checked their improved stats and drop rates. They thank Ryota for his help, but Emily feels a bit saddened that Ryota isn't gaining experience points himself despite all his efforts. Ryota responds by explaining that experiences are not just denoted by numbers and that he has gained a lot through his adventures in this world. He believes that they are now ready for the next stage. As they walk around town, they notice that people are talking about them. Rumors circulate that Emily, the girl with the hammer, has a supplier providing her with powerful weapons. They are also credited with taming a killer rabbit, and Celeste is praised for her exceptional intel gathering skills. The new girl is recognized for her ability to tame monsters, and their reputation continues to grow. Ryota takes the girls to obtain their licenses, explaining that having at least one licensed member allows them all to enter the dungeon. Alice will learn from their experiences and prepare for her own exam, while Eve already possesses a license. Emily and Celeste successfully pass their exams and acquire their licenses. 
Ryota then proposes that they operate individually for a while, each heading to different hunting grounds to maximize their talents and assess their individual profit potentials. He provides them with potions to boost their drop rates and advises them not to overexert themselves. The family members part ways, each pursuing their own path. After six days, they reconvene. Emily reveals that she averaged around 160,000 pilos per day, while Eve managed an average of 120,000 pilos. The combined efforts of Alice and Celeste resulted in an average of 215,000 pilos per day. Ryota himself earned an impressive 1,560,000 pilos daily. Together, they can now generate a total of 2 million pilos each day. Ryota decides to invest in magic carts for everyone, demonstrating that these carts are designed to transport materials to a storage room, showcasing Orton's latest model. This innovation allows them to continue hunting even when their carts are full. They discuss the logistics of delivering the goods to the trader, and Erza agrees to work exclusively for them, handling the goods counting and arrangements for collection. Ryota expresses his confidence in their ability to hunt without concerns and reflects on his gratitude for being summoned to this world. They host a welcoming party for Erza, joined by other families like the Neptune family. The princess also arrives to thank Ryota, and Orden and Clint visit to express their appreciation. Observing everyone enjoying themselves, Ryota acknowledges his good fortune for being summoned to this world and gaining a unique skill. They decide to venture back into the dungeon to acquire more food for their party. That was the last episode of My Unique Skills Makes Me Up Even at Level 1. We hope you enjoyed the anime. Check other recaps on the channel. Subscribe to watch the new anime shows we are going to recap. See you in the next one.